So now in this next flowchart entitled Chloroplast 2, we're just going to be continuing our discussion on photosynthetic pigments. And remember that photosynthetic pigments are the pigments that are literally going to be capturing and absorbing the light energy. They play a very important role as sort of starting everything off. So we'll continue discussing those photosynthetic pigments um, in this next part of chloroplasts. In addition to chlorophyll A, we also have accessory pigments. And let's remember that chlorophyll A is the primary photosynthetic pigment. But that primary photosynthetic pigment needs help. And these are the accessory pigments. They are going to help out chlorophyll A complete its very important job of absorbing and capturing as much light energy as possible. So accessory pigments, their job is to uh, basically what we can say is that um, accessory pigment absorbs wavelengths of light not absorbed by who? If it help, who's it helping out? Not absorbed by chlorophyll A, of course. So chlorophyll A has this incredible ability to absorb, you know, a decent amount of wavelength decent amount of range, but what these accessory pigments do is anything that the chlorophyll A can't pick up or doesn't have a good job of picking up, because remember, light is presented in many different wavelengths. The visible light has many different wavelengths that it has to be sort of radiated through. What chlorophyll A does is pick up a certain amount of wavelength and a certain specific type of wavelength. Accessory pigments will come in and pick up the ones that chlorophyll A can't pick up, that chlorophyll A can't absorb. So what we imagine is that the accessory pigments, their main job is this idea that they're, once they've um, gotten that energy, that energy is passed or it passes energy onto um, the actual chlorophyll A pigment. Because look what happens. If you can't absorb a certain wavelength, you're going to use an accessory pigment. That accessory pigment will absorb it and then pass it off onto chlorophyll A. What we can say about accessory pigments is that, and this is, I think, the most important function, is this idea that the, um, accessory pigment widens absorbable, absorbable light spectrum. I think there's a very nice way of saying what accessory pigments do. These are the helpers of chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll A can't absorb all light. It can only absorb light that is bright green. We don't need to get into the specifics, the physics of it. We don't need to understand anything more than the fact that chlorophyll A absorbs bright green light. But what we imagine is that it needs help. And that help is given by these accessory pigments because they do this. They widen that spectrum. And because they widen the spectrum, they increase the overall energy capture capability of the plant cell itself. If you do this on a large scale in every single plant cell of the entire plant, you are increasing energy capture to a very, very high extent because you're just widening the amount of light you can absorb. So let's put some names to this face, this face of an accessory pigment. If we have chlorophyll A, it's accessory pigment. Its cousin is chlorophyll B, I like to consider it. Chlorophyll B. Chlorophyll B, instead of having a methyl group, it is only different because it actually has a carbonyl group. A carbonyl group, and we remember that a carbonyl group is uh, C double bond O, um, usually, and it depends on what it is, either aldehyde or ketone. We don't need to get into that. But C double bond O is a carbonyl group. And specifically, chlorophyll A helps out because it actually absorbs yellow um, and green light. So yellowish green, let's imagine. Remember, chlorophyll A absorbed bright green light. It was a bright green pigment. This is yellow and yellowish and green. Um, and what I mean by absorb, I mean I don't want to get into like the actual physics of it because then it's going to be very confusing. But when we say that something is bright green, this specific, and I want to make sure that we're accurate with it, the specific thing that we're saying is that that thing that's bright green, chlorophyll A, absorbs everything except for bright green. Okay, I know that's a little confusing, but if you ha have any questions about it, definitely post it in the forum section uh, of the website. Uh, I always have trouble sort of giving this out to students, and I don't like to say it like that because then it confuses everybody, but I just want to do it for accuracy's sake, that when something is the color red, 
it absorbs everything except for red, and that's why it looks red. I know it's a little counterintuitive, but that's besides the point. Just wanted to make that clear, okay, just so that we have an accurate representation of what we're talking about. Otherwise, let's just go back to our idea of accessory pigments. Chlorophyll B, yellowish green, helps out chlorophyll A because it widens the spectrum. We now have yellow in the spectrum. We didn't have yellow before. In addition to that, we have carotenoids. Carotenoids are very famous. They kind of sound like something. Um, they kind of sound like carrots, right? Carotenoids, um, can, you can now obviously imagine what color they absorb. They actually absorb yellow and also orange. And you know what, I'm not going to say absorb anymore, but they are part of the spectrum that allows yellow and orange to be um, accessed, let's say. Okay, because it's not technically right to say absorb. But let's not get into that. Let's just avoid that entirely. Accessory pigments, chlorophyll B, and carotenoids help out chlorophyll A by widening the light spectrum that can be absorbed. In addition to the idea of accessory pigments, um, your notes also mention, sort of a side note, this idea of measuring um, absorption sort of applying the knowledge that we've learned. You can actually measure absorption within a lab and it's important to understand the process that goes behind it because you probably will be have to, having to do this at some point when you're working on some sort of lab either in Bio 117 or any other lab in your future. What actually happens is that we imagine and based on the idea of accessory pigments that each pigment actually absorbs, let's say each pigment absorbs light energy at some wavelengths better than others. Better than others. What we basically mean by this is that carotenoids absorb yellow and orange. They have the yellow and orange capabilities more than anybody else. Chlorophyll B has the capability of yellow and green more than anybody else. Chlorophyll A is great at doing bright green. That's what we mean by this. Everybody has a specific ability. Everybody has a specific job that they're good at in terms of accessory pigments. What we can do is we can actually, um, due to some uh, ability in the lab, we can actually isolate and study um, the specific ability that um, somebody is successful with. The specific pigment um, can be utilized and isolated and studied by using um, spectrophotometer. So we use a spectrophotometer. Spectrophotometer, that's how you say it. Um, this actually is going to be a tool that measures light intensity. And what we basically mean by this is that this tool is going to be very useful because if it measures intensity most at yellow and orange, that means that you're obviously looking at a carotenoid within this spectrophotometer. If it measures light intensity the most at the yellow-green scale, then you're looking at a chlorophyll B molecule. So it's a very useful tool, especially within uh, a lab. What you can do is then you can plot the absorption that you see. And once you've plotted the absorption, you can actually create an action spectrum. These are all lab techniques, not in not incredibly important for the purposes of, let's say, Biology 115, but they're still in your notes, so we have to present them and understand them. So we can plot this absorption that we see and then create an action spectrum. The action spectrum just basically is going to be something that determines, it's sort of a way to put this into words. Um, it determines which wavelengths are best for photosynthesis. And so when we want to study photosynthesis, we have to create an action spectrum by plotting the absorption, by using a spectrophotometer, by isolating and studying specific pigments. That's how we figured out all this information. That's the importance of measuring absorption. You do not have this part of your notes, the accessory pigments parts or the chlorophyll A part of your notes, unless you have somebody who's done this in the lab because they've realized that these wavelengths of yellow and orange, of yellow and green and bright green are the ones that are going to be best for photosynthesis because they are presented by the carotenoids, by chlorophyll A and by chlorophyll B. So overall, now we understand what's going on in the chloroplast. The chloroplast is that structure that's doing photosynthesis. It's a part of a eukaryotic plant cell. And it contains accessory pigments like chlorophyll A, like chlorophyll B and carotenoids that help the uh, chlorophyll A molecule widen its spectrum, widen its ability to absorb light and thus increase the energy capture capability that it has. And we can measure this ability by using these techniques presented below.